Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm the Creative Siren and this is Six Days of Christmas Polymer Clay Edition. So the first thing that we're gonna do is grab our glass jar and our liquid Sculpey and put a nice and thin even layer all over that jar. Then we're gonna take our polymer clay and cover that entire jar. I decided to grab a uh, colored polymer clay, that way there would be a pop of color whenever I did open up my jar, but you don't have to do that. Any polymer clay will work just fine. And then I covered the jar with another layer of polymer clay, that way I was working with a nice solid base rather than just the pink. Once I've done that, I'm going to make two little pancakes and these are going to create the thighs of our frog. We want him to be more of an oblong shape to conceal the shape of the jar. So that's what these are going to help do. And all we're doing is just blending those two little chunky little pancakes into the base here. You can make them as large or as small as you decide that you want to. Should look something like that. Next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add like a little beak right in the front of our frog. So right in between where we added those thighs. It's going to look really funky at first, but please trust the process. <laughs> and we're just going to blend that beak in uh, right into the base. Once I've blended that in, I'm going to grab two little ropes of clay and I'm going to put them on either side of this little beak. And that's going to really conceal the huge drop that this beak has and really kind of make it more of a smoother cliff or a mountain rather. We're just blending that right into the rest of our base. When that's all done, I'm going to grab another little pancake of clay and I'm going to put it right underneath where that beak was. This is going to form the little belly on our Christmas frog. I wanted him to be nice and plump, so this is just a good way to really achieve that look. Then I grab these two small piece-sized bits of clay and I put it right where I want the eyes to be. After which I will grab my glass eyes and I will press them firmly into those little pieces of clay and then blend it all out. Now here's where we start to create the legs. So this is kind of a thicker sausage like or rope of clay. And we're going to do this on both sides. We're going to create that foot and then press it down into the body and then blend it all the way through. We don't want any harsh lines here. We're looking for grace. We're looking for, what, what are we looking for? <laughs> we're looking, at to, looking for it to be a nice and smooth transition from body part to body part. So in this case, you don't notice that the leg is just slapped on. It's just nicely blended in with the rest of it. Now, once you've got those legs nicely put onto the body, we are going to take the base of his foot there and we are going to make three little slices to create his little froggy toes. And at this point, we're gonna take any tools that we feel comfortable using and round out all of those toes so that they're not just super square. 
And at this point I'm marking the very ends because I'm trying to create kind of like a round bulbousy look right on the end of his toes. and do that for both sides. Now when you have that done, you're gonna grab another snake of clay and you're gonna roll it so that one side is thicker than the other side and this is going to create the thigh of our frog. So you're gonna place this piece right on top of where we added those pancakes of clay right at the beginning and this is really going to protrude that side leg um, the way that a frog's leg sits. And then again, press it down and blend it in with the rest of the body. Now at this point I decided to go in and start doing the smile on our little froggy. You can do this later in the tutorial if you decide to. I don't know, I just like to see him all come together and I got really excited so I did it at this point. <laughs> Now we're gonna go ahead and add the back feet to his legs the same way that we did those front feet. Now when you're ready to attach it, I just take a little flap of clay and I turn my frog upside down and I'm just going to blend that little flap onto the foot and the back leg to form one continuous piece. And don't forget to blend the very top on the other side. Now this is kind of the fun part. You're gonna take a dry sponge at this point and you're gonna press it into every place on this frog. This is going to create a really cool frog texture, like a scaly texture all over your frog. This is my favorite way to add texture to anything dragon related, lizard related, any amphibians, any reptiles. It just has a really, really cool um, pattern on these dry sponges. And the cool thing is you never get the same pattern twice if you're using different sponges. And I like to cut them up into little strips, that way it's so much easier to get into nooks and crevices. Now when you're done with all that, go ahead and add his little nostrils. They're kind of a tear, tear shape, um, so it's thicker on one side and tapers out at the end. And there you go. Go ahead and throw them in the oven per the instructions on the back of your polymer clay. Once he is cured and cooled, you're going to take your favorite color of green and you're gonna paint his entire body. Don't worry if you happen to get any on his glass eyes or even on the glass rim at the very top of the jar here. Um, we can always get rid of that later on. That's a simple fix. I usually will go over the eyes just because it's a lot easier to do it that way. 
Once you're all done with that, I will go in with a darker green than the one I used originally, and I will make a wash, mixing water in with that green and, do, and brushing it all over the body. And I will do the same thing with a lighter, brighter green right on top of that dark green. Next, I'm going to take a brown wash and mix it right in with that light green that we just added all over the frog. And I'm gonna go in with some highlights. I'm gonna highlight the top of his back leg, the front of his face. I might go in onto his belly and definitely on his back. This is gonna create that dynamic texture that we see on all the different colorations that we normally see on a frog. And don't be afraid to use your fingers to really blend that in with the rest of them. Now, that dark green that we originally used as a wash, you're gonna take it in, an, um, in its full concentrated form and just dab a little bit here or there in the back to create these bright dynamic dots. I tend to take these colors and I just add them very liberally all over the frog wherever I feel it could really use some good texture and highlight. Now I'm going to go in with kind of a light green mixed with a pale yellow wash and put that on his belly to really highlight his belly and then take that and again put it on his back on the front of his face very lightly and on the back of his thighs. Again, just wherever I feel it needs it. And you really start to see the texture and the coloration on the frog skin really start to shine at this point. Now when he's all done, go ahead and grab your hobby knife or your X-Acto knife and just scratch at the top of the glass and that paint will come right off. So it seems at this point I actually forgot to film the part where I actually make this hat, but I'm just going to walk you through it real quick right now. All I did was take some Super Sculpey Ultralight and I formed it um, in the shape of a hat onto the cork piece or the cork insert for my jar. I made sure to add Liquid Sculpey in between the clay and the cork to make sure that it adhered really well. And then, of course, once it's baked and cooled, I will go in and add some Liquid Sculpey again, spread it evenly, and then cover the whole thing in my regular polymer clay. After which, I'm going in here and I'm adding some detailing right on the tail of this hat. This is just going to highlight the natural folds and creases of the fabric hat. I will do that with my explorer tool and then soften all of those edges with my silicone tool. Now once I'm all done doing that texturing, I'm going to add a gumball size bit of clay and attach it to my hat using a little bit of liquid Sculpey. This is going to create that puff ball right at the end of our hat. And then I'm going to take a dotting stylus or a ball stylus and I'm going to dot that entire um, gumball of clay to create these peaks and valleys to really look like it's a fluff ball. Next I'm going to take just this little bit of clay here. I'm going to wrap it around the base and make sure you cover that little lip of glass that may you may have left at the beginning. And once you have that all covered, we're going to go ahead and dot that 
little piece the same way that we did that little gumball that we just did. And there we have a Santa hat. Go ahead and throw him in the oven um, per the directions on the back of your polymer clay. Now that he is nice and cool, we are gonna go ahead and cover this entire thing with a base layer of white acrylic paint. Once that paint is dry, we're gonna go ahead and paint the hat red, omitting the fluffy areas, cause those are gonna stay white. Now at this point, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of holly to the hat. So I just cut out these little tiny holly leaves. They're not perfect. They're just jagged and sharp and that's really all holly leaves need to look like. I put two together and then put three little holly berries right in the middle. I did end up moving this onto the white tuft of the hat instead of the red part, um, but you can put yours wherever you'd like. And then go ahead and bake for the last time. After which we'll go in and we'll paint the little holly berries and the holly leaves. Now just when I thought I was done, I thought that it could use one more little thing, and that is, is that no Santa hat is complete without a tiny bit of shimmer. So I took some poly acrylic and some shimmery red mica powder and I mixed it together to create kind of this poly acrylic paint. And then I lightly brushed that on to all the red parts of the hat. It not only gives it a really terrific glossy shine, but it has that really nice metallic red look. And there you go. You have a happy little Christmas frog. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you tomorrow for day number two. If you love this video, be sure to click here to see our last video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another tutorial. See you later. Bye.